Hi friends, welcome to my channel NM. Learn my courses with Nagamani. This is the second lecture of thermodynamics. And in previous class, we studied about what is heat and what is work and how the heat is converted into work and work is converted into heat. And we also see the definition of uh, uh, thermodynamics and uh, some of the terminologies which you will use in thermodynamics and also how to study thermodynamics means uh, like uh, there are two approaches for th studies thermodynamics one is microscopic viewpoint another one is macroscopic viewpoint uh, so we studied that in detail in previous class and also we studied about what is system surrounding boundary with the example in previous lecture and today we are going to discuss about what are the types of boundaries and what are the types of systems and thermodynamic property these three we are going to study in this lecture okay now we will see there are uh, types of boundaries in types of boundaries like we saw the definition of boundary in the previous class which is the thing which separates the system from the surrounding which is nothing but boundary and this is the i am i want to explain these types of boundary with this example and if you see the boundary there are two it can be classified into two types one is real boundary and another one is imaginary boundary if you see the definition of real boundary here which does not allow mass transfer through it okay which does not allow mass transfer through it and in imaginary boundary mass transfer will occur and in real boundary there are two types of boundary one is fixed boundary another one is moving boundary in fixed boundary which does not allow mass transfer in moving boundary which allows mass transfer like if you see the example this here fixed boundary means this wall comes under fixed boundary so it does not fix moving boundary means if we three if we take a one side as door then that door comes under moving boundary so uh, if we can say that to get the work from the closed system minimum one boundary should be moving because if we take one classroom which having all sides is closed then we can't do any work with that room so we can't enter or we can't go out from that room and we can't do any work with that but uh, with that closed system we don't have any use so if we need some work with that room then one boundary should be one boundary should be moving so that if we fix the door at one wall side then we can move and we can use that space so we can say that to get the work from the closed system minimum one boundary should be moving these are the types of boundary i think everyone is understood next we will move to the types of systems okay there are three types of systems one is open system and then one is closed system third one is isolated system open system means here mass transfer will allow and also energy transfer will allow between the system and surrounding and in closed system only energy transfer only energy transfer will allow and there is no mass transfer through it in closed system in open system both energy transfer and mass transfer will allow isolated system there is no mass transfer and there is no energy transfer will occur okay and i will give the one example example for each system if you see the open system here we can say the pressure cooker if you see here this is the pressure cooker this is the one good example to understand the what is open system so here we are giving the heat from the bottom side so that the heat is go transferring between these uh, system like whatever the uh, thing which is inside the pressure cooker which is 
boiling that means we are adding heat from the bottom side so that the heat transfer is going to occur here and also here that uh, when the whistle is comes that evaporation is coming that means that evaporation is nothing but mass transfer is between the inside system to the surrounding so in open system both mass transfer and energy transfer will occur between the system and surrounding and coming to the closed system if we take i will see i will tell you one example this one when we prepare biryani in last 5 minutes we will keep one plate and we will put some maida uh, that uh, then the evaporation like whatever the vapor present in the vessel that won't go outside no so this is the one example for closed system like we only heat transfer is allowing from the bottom side and there is no mass transfer between the system and surrounding so that it comes under closed system i will give technical examples also these examples i am giving for your better understanding and you can remember easily whenever you see the such things in your home or wherever you go you can identify that which is comes under what is open system and which is comes under closed system so you can easily identify with these examples so that's why i am giving this small examples for understanding and isolated system means it does it does not allow mass transfer and energy transfer through it so the perfect example for this isolated system is perfectly insulated rigid container that means if we take a container which is insulated outside wait if we take rigid container which is insulated outside insulation means which does not allow heat transfer through it okay so if we take one container which is insulated outside then that uh, so that the heat transfer is won't occur and mass transfer also the four side is closed that way mass transfer is also not occur between the system and surrounding so that uh, the perfectly insulated rigid container comes under isolated system in this way open system closed system and isolated system is classified so in isolated system there is no mass transfer and there is no energy transfer okay in this way both uh, open system closed system and isolated system is classified and next i will give the definition for each and every system so you you can write or you can take the screenshot of this so that it will help you open system means in open system both mass and energy transfer takes place between the system and surrounding and also example for the open system if we take turbine compressor condenser boiler heat exchanger and if we take home appliances like pump these are all comes under open system and closed system in closed system there is no any mass transfer between the system and surrounding and there is no any mass transfer between the system and surrounding in closed system so this closed system is also called as control mass system and if so open system is also called as control volume system and in closed system it is called as control mass it's mass system because in closed system the mass is constant and in con open system only we will uh, focus on only particular volume of the uh, any system so that uh, open system is also called as control volume system and closed system is also called as control mass system so if you see the definition of closed system in closed system there is no mass transfer between the system and surrounding so mass of the system is constant this closed system is also called as control mass system in closed system heat transfer and work transfer may take place between the system and surrounding next one is isolated system in isolated system neither mass 
nor energy will transfer between the system and surrounding the example for the isolated system is perfectly insulator rigid container the best example for this isolated system we can say that universe and i forgot to give the example for closed system uh, for closed system i said a uh, rigid container and piston cylinder arrangement without walls these are comes under closed system and more examples we will discuss in coming lectures okay these are the types of system and also now we are going to study about thermodynamic properties properties means properties are the characteristic by which the system can be identified that means if we to elaborate any one person we can say that at uh, his height uh, how much he is height like 6 feet or 5 feet height and what is the shape like he is uh, thinner or thicker we will uh, with the help of the, some uh, measurements we will say that we will uh, elaborate that person uh, that are the properties for uh, to explain about this person likewise for system also there are some properties to recognize the system so properties means that are the characteristic so that the system can be identified there are two types of properties will be there one is intensive properties another one is extensive properties intensive properties are the independent of mass or size of the size of the system this is uh, intensive properties independent of mass and size of the system extent in extensive properties are dependent on mass or size of the system okay and i will give the example how to identify intensive properties how to identify the extensive properties and uh, the intensive properties which are independent of mass like if we see in thermodynamics we will see pressure temperature density viscosity and thermal conductivity these are all comes under intensive properties if you see the pressure as the mass increases the pressure won't increase so which is independent of mass temperature also if you take water in one cup and like uh, we boiled 100 uh, we boiled some water uh, up to 50 degrees centigrade and we will measure that water like temperature of that water in big vessel that it will show 50 degrees centigrade alone and we we'll take one cup and take the water from that big vessel and measure again temperature so it will show again this temperature also 50 degree centigrade only it won't depend on mass of the mass or size of the system that's why uh, pressure temperature like west temp density and viscosity thermal conductivity everything comes under intensive properties and coming to the extensive pro extensive properties these are the dependent on mass of the system so for exam uh, the examples for the extensive properties are mass and volume internal energy if we see, uh, write the internal energy formula mcp dt so wherever m will come in that formula those are all comes under extensive properties okay like i will give examples like mass volume internal energy enthalpy and entropy electrical charge and mechanical field everything comes under extensive properties and how to identify this intensive properties and extensive properties i will give one small example first we will take one system so if this system having mass volume and internal energy pressure temperature and density everything we measured in this system and now we take the again same system and we are dividing this system into two parts now if we see here here mass is total mass of the system here ma here mass is of 
and here also mass is divided so mass is m by 2 and volume also divided so volume also divided v by 2 and internal energy also is changing so internal energy also off so if you see here the here mass volume and internal energy these are all dividing and pressure is same at the same and temperature is same both sides and density also same so these are which is independent of mass this below three so pressure temperature density comes under intensive properties and whatever divided whatever whatever dependent on mass those comes under extensive properties in this way we can identify what are the intensive properties and extensive properties if you see in competitive exams they will uh, give some uh, like these type of properties and they will uh, they will ask you to find the uh, what are the intensive properties or which is the extensive property so you have to read these things and also we can give one more tip ratio of two extensive properties are always intensive properties that means here if you see the definite density here density definition density equal to mass by volume if you see here mass also depend mass means its mass only so volume also dependent on mass like these two arms comes under mass and volume both comes under extensive properties so the ratio of extensive properties will comes under intensive properties and one more tip all specific properties are intensive properties specific means we whatever may be per unit mass per unit mass like per unit mass whatever the specific properties are there all comes under intensive properties so we are dividing with mass that means it won't dependent on mass so that all the specific properties will comes under intensive properties and the ratio of two extensive properties also intensive properties in this way we can classify types of properties and next we will we will go in depth of thermodynamic subject uh, if anyone like this type of lecture please comment below and which one with pen paper is uh, more effective for you or in the slides which is more effective for you please comment so that i can understand which way you want to learn concepts and thank you for watching keep supporting for my channel like this only please like share and subscribe to my channel thank you everyone